Lift your hands up high in this church today. Let's pull our minds off of our lives and get our minds and our hearts steadfast on Him. He alone stands worthy of our thoughts, our attention, our love. We adore you, Lord. There is no other name but the name of Jesus. We come to adore and exalt and worship that name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Precious Jesus, you're so good to us. Thank you, great praise team. I appreciate you. Give them God bless you, everybody. Remain standing. In Leviticus chapter 6, I have a very important encouraging word to place within your hearts today. And the fire upon the altar, I want you to shout fire. Now, before I read anything else, I want you to turn to someone and say, get fired up. And the fire shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn there on the fat of the peace offerings. Again, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. The fire, it shall never go out. 1 Thessalonians 5.19 Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Hmm. On the day of Pentecost, we celebrate that today, 50 days from the resurrection. They were all in one accord, in one place. And suddenly, come on, Lord. God, these folks, they've been working so hard. They've been under such the burden of life. My great church, I see it in some of their faces. They love you, but Lord... They need a suddenly. I mean, they've been interrupted by other suddenlies. They need a God suddenly. How many raise your hand and say, I could use a God suddenly. Come on, somebody. I just. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. You can hear a tornado long before you ever see it. It's like a freight train blowing. Mm, mm, mm. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. In other words, they may have sprayed their hair down good, but it didn't matter that day. It was all over the place. There was a time I used hairspray. I'm not ashamed of it. It was man's hairspray, but nonetheless. All the gel and the, you know, it just blew everything. I mean, the things were blowing. The wind was blowing. God, let the wind blow again at Lighthouse. We need a fresh blowing of your wind. Filling this room. Let your wind blow. Then there appeared divided tongues as of what? Fire set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. I want to preach to you for a moment on the comeback of the fire. The comeback of fire. Would you just lift your hands? And I want you to pray sincerely. God, start a new fire in me. Would you just do that? Lift up your voice, everybody. I can't pray for you. That's all on you. If you're going to be on fire, that's going to be because you want to be on fire. Oh, get that out, Rabbi Hashondo. Lord, I bless you today that there's a fresh, a fresh fire, a fresh anointing burning in this room, God. 
And I thank you that sparks are going to begin to fly up across this room, across this church, across our family. I thank you, God, that all the things that have quenched the fire of God in us, they are being no more allowed to quench and to douse out our flame. God, we are going to be people on fire. And, Lord, we love you. We give you all the praise. One more time, give the Lord a mighty shout of praise, everybody. Hallelujah. Now, as you're seated today, I want to tell you that when Jesus ascended to heaven, one of his final commands was, you are to go into Jerusalem. One of the last things off his lips was, and you're going to wait, and you're going to tarry, and I'm going to send you a comforter. I must go so he can come. And when he comes, you'll know it. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to Jerusalem, and I just want you to spend time in my presence and praying and seeking my face and worshiping and honoring me. He said that to 500 people. Now, 10 days later, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, there were only 120. A minority, listen to me. A small minority stayed around for the fire. Now, not ever, you need to hear me, not everybody wants fire. 380 had other things to do. 380 people were busy. 380 of them uh, maybe were challenged to, uh, you know, they had all kinds of opportunities. Or they got weary or they got impatient. They didn't know what was God up to. I can tell you that 500 had the assignment. You are going to get fire. And when the Holy Ghost comes, Jesus said in Acts 1-8, you'll be my witnesses and you'll change this world. But when all of the things came and accumulated together on that Pentecostal day, on the day of Pentecost, 120 remained. But you need to hear me. I know sometimes, hey, did you hear me? You feel like you're in a minority. Sometimes, you know, with the, the fire and the passion of God in me, I feel like, how strange am I? I feel so, you know, out of place. And then I look at the world, and to be honest with you, I'm glad I don't feel at home in this crazy world. We don't belong here. We're passers through. We're envoys. We are aliens. We are strangers. We are pilgrims. You need to hear me. This world is not your home. And if you've settled in too deep into this world and you've got too comfortable in this world, it's time to wake up, tell your heart to be challenged and to say, okay, I am going to see myself for what I am. I'm just somebody going through to make a difference. Now, they were in a minority. Anybody ever feel like a fish out of water in this world today? Come on, somebody. I mean, I, I have never felt more strange, more weird, what everyone else seems to be cool with, it just, I just can't get it. I can't, I can't step in to what everyone is so impressed with, what everyone's so involved in. I just feel like I'm just speaking another language. I, what am I doing here? And the Lord said, well, you're just passing by, and you're in the minority, but look what that minority did. 120 on the day of Pentecost. Praise God, when the fire came, that day 3,000 people were saved. God doesn't need a majority. He just needs a minority on fire. Oh, I wish somebody was listening to me this morning. I said, God would rather have a minority on fire than a majority of ice cubes. Hey! Uh One of the great scriptures that I love so much is found in 1 Peter 2.9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special peculiar people, that you may proclaim the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I got news for this church today. You are royal priests unto God. Hallelujah. Our God is a consuming fire. When John was baptized in water, he saw Jesus and said, Behold, the Lamb that takes away the sin of the world. I will baptize you in water, but he will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and in fire. Church, I want to tell you today, it's time to get on fire once again. It's time for the fire to come back. Hmm. We are priests unto God. We celebrate what that means, and we are excited to know that. But listen, here's some things that priests had. They had the inheritance. They had the response of the people. People followed them. They had influence over the people. They could enter the secret place. They could enter the holy place. And they could make petitions known. And while we relish those rights, they also had, and listen, priesthood to God, we have responsibilities. 
some of which are we are responsible for the sacrifice. Bring a sacrifice of praise in the house of the Lord. Today, when you walked in and out of this world, uh, the assignment is most uh, rigorous, and it's most daunting if you think about it. We have got just a few moments of your time, and I appreciate the moments you give us. I'm glad that you're here today. You could have had other things, and you could not be here. I want you to know how much it means to us that you are here. All of you in our family watching, I want you to know how much we love you. But the reality is sometimes the last thing on your mind is to praise and to worship the Lord. And it's not convenient and it's not easy and it, it defies rationale. It makes no sense. I mean, you've been in a world, you've been under the attack of the world. You have the smell of the world. You have the influence of the world. All of the things, the cries, the voices of the world are, are trying to capture your attention and you've got to make a decision. I'm going to do what is not convenient. I'm going to, even if I have to sacrifice. I'm going to sacrifice praise unto the Lord. Paul writes in Romans 12, 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. As priests, we have responsibilities. We are responsible for the tabernacle. We are responsible to bring the first fruits offering. Come on, church. We are responsible to intercede and stand in the gap. We were responsible for the Ark of the Covenant, God's presence. But one of the great responsibilities of the priesthood is to keep the fire on the altar burning. You may not know this, but the reality is if that priest would sleep and, that, and, and did not prepare to keep that fire burning, it could very well cost him his life. They were executed for letting the fire on the altar go out. Church, I got a news, I got a news flash for you today. We've got to get the fire on the altar burning once again. Are you hearing me at Lighthouse today? We've got to get back a blaze and a fire. Nobody follows an ice truck. Nobody. I mean, you don't see no ice truck down the road. People just following. Where's the ice going? Where's the ice going? But you get a fire truck winding down the road with that siren on, people are turning around seeing where's the fire. People want to know, is there a church on fire? Come on. We used to sing, the Holy Spirit is here and his power is real. Anything can happen and it probably will. Something very good, something good is going on around here. There's a spark that burns in every heart. Light the way and defeat the dark. Something very good, something good. Thanks for snapping along. Good is going on around here. Here we go. This is a church on fire. This is the Holy Spirit flame. We have a burning desire to lift up Jesus' name. Let fire burn in every heart. Light the way, defeat the dark with the flame of burning fire. This is a church. This is a church on fire. Anybody remember that? I want to tell you something. I remember my friend in Columbus, Indiana, not once, not twice, but having the fire department called on his church. Passerbys would stop, and they would see flames bursting out of that roof. Pastor Randy Burton, we've had him here, not once but twice. And they finally said, Pastor, we're going to find you because we're coming out. Everybody's seeing a fire, but when we get here, there's no fire. He said, there's no fire on the outside, but there's fire on the inside. Church, it's time to get on fire once again for Jesus. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said it's time to get on fire about what God has done in your life. You're not going to hell. Let me just tell you something. You either burn for Jesus on the earth or you burn without him forever in hell. Your choice. You're going to burn somewhere. I'm going to burn here so I don't have to burn there. Is that good preaching, somebody? It is time that the church get enthused and excited once again and the zeal and the combustion and the heat and the passion and the fire of God begin to burn in our souls. Jeremiah said the fire and the word of the Lord will shut up in my bones. If you're glad you're in the house today, I want you to jump up to your feet and give the Lord a shout of fire. Come on, church. Come on, somebody.
I saw a pastor friend of mine yesterday, and he had gotten so sick. We had prayed over him, and I mean, he was knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door uh, several times over the past several months. And I said to him, it's good to see you. He said, I'd rather be seen than viewed. But someday, if the Lord tarries his coming, we're all going to be viewed. And when they pass by, is anyone going to think to say about you? They were on fire. They were on fire for the Lord. It, it, how, how long is it going to be till they get to that? I'm challenging you, and I'm encouraging you, and I'm speaking grace over you because some of you need to know that you just have not been on fire, but today's fire day. Today's the day we set the match unto all the dryness in your heart. The best wood for a fire is dry wood. And you've been dry, and you've just been sitting there, and you've been wondering, man, I'm telling you, I'm just so dry. Well, praise God, we're going to start a fire with you today. We're going to set a match on you today, and it takes one little spark. And guess what? We're going to, we're going to declare fire starters across this place. I want to tell you three things we need to have the fire about. We need to have the fire of conviction. 1 John 2.15 says, love not the world. Oh, love not the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Church, this time we set some boundaries in our lives. We are people of conviction. We don't get to go everywhere we want to go. We don't get to say everything we want to say. We don't get to do everything we want to do. We don't get to have the attitude we may want to have because we are priesthood. We belong to God, and we are people of conviction. And we have the courage to say, no, we're not going to do that. No, we're not participating in that. No, you can't make me. No, you can't tell me what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is serve the Lord. And if you come up and try to get me to compromise, I love you. But my answer is going to be no. I've got boundaries. I'm not going to let people that are not on fire speak into me. I'm not going to let people that don't love Jesus like I love him have a, a, a say and a vote in my life. I'm not going to do anything that would compromise my fire. I, we've got convictions. What about a fire of compassion? Matthew chapter 9, Jesus said that he saw the sheep scattered abroad with, with no shepherd. And the word says that he was moved with compassion on them. Then he said, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Therefore pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send labors into the harvest field. There are people all around you that are shivering in the cold of sin. They are bound. They are dark. They are desperate. And you're the only one around them in their entire world. They're not going to find it at home. They're not going to find it with their friends. They're not going to find it in their gatherings. You are put there in their lives to help them get on fire for Jesus. If you don't have compassion on them and their eternal souls, who will? Fire commitment. Uh-oh. It's time we get committed. It is time. You know, people all my life told me I need to be committed. I'm going to have myself committed. I'm committed to Christ. Paul said, the thanks to Timothy, the things that I've given unto you, you also commit to faithful men that will be able to teach others. I come by to ask you today to make a decision. I'm going to be on fire for the Lord in all that I do, in my convictions. Some of us have gotten so much in the gray area, we don't even know right from wrong anymore. That's preaching. Can I preach to you for a moment? The news ain't got no business telling you the truth, what you, they think is the truth. The culture has no business giving you their uh, take on the truth. And unless, unless it's from the Word of God, let God be true and everyone else a liar. I'm standing on the Word. The Word is truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I am the way, the truth, the life. Jesus isn't just one of many truths, not one of many ways, not one of many lives. He is the only way, the only truth. So we're going to stand, and we're going to have convictions, and we're just never going to compromise. And some of you need to get your convictions back for your fire, on your fire today. You need to say, okay, I'm going to get conviction about some things. You know, I've been praying. I've been praying 
an old-fashioned prayer. And it's this. And that is that people, once again, wherever they're at, they would just realize they're lost. They may not be watching a church service. They may not be at church. But something begins to say to them, you know, the church today does things so much better than the church I grew up in. But we have lost that. Did you hear me? Think about that. We've got people, I've said it before, living in sin, and they come to church. I'm glad they're here. But they're living in sin, and they know they're living in sin, and they know I know they're living in sin, and it is what it is with them. And on their way out, they'll say, Pastor, I really enjoyed the service. And I think, uh, you weren't supposed to enjoy the service. You're supposed to be feeling miserable. You're supposed to have your, your hand squeezing the pew at the altar call. You're supposed to feel here. I mean, the old time, you know, Billy Sunday, those old time preachers, they'd preach hell so hot, people would fill the flame and try to call, climb up the pillars of those tents to stop the, the, the flame burning on their feet. They, that's how much the conviction was. There was a day when people were, were just under conviction and shaking of their sin. They knew they were wrong. Come on, church. They knew they were in sin. They knew if they died in their sin, they would go to hell. How many times have I asked, how, how many of you know for sure today if you die, you're going to heaven? And many not raising their hands. And I'll say, okay, now, all of you didn't raise your hands. I'm going to count to three. And when I count to three, I want you to raise your hands. And I want you to come to the altar. And today we're going to surrender our hearts to the Lord. Do they raise their hands? No. Do they, know, do they come to the altar? No. Do they go out in their sin and die in their sin and go to hell? Yes. Why? Because there's no conviction. There's no conviction for sin. Everybody's cool. Everybody's fine. I'm all right. Don't nobody worry about me. Come on. But I'm worried about you. I'm worried about all of you that are lukewarm, that all of you that are casual, all of you that are just unresponsive, and you're blasé, and you're not on fire for the Lord. God is concerned about you. He's got one thing he wants to hear come out of your mouth. Jesus, I'm coming home. Forgive me, I'm a sinner. Very recently, we've had people, in my estimation, God honored my prayer. People out of nowhere, people that were wayward, people that were prodigal, people that did not know, that, 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 they, that they did not know how lost they was until they hit bottom. And sometimes you've got to hit bottom until you finally look up. And now we are seeing it, church. I'm seeing the... Uh, the fruit of that. I'm seeing people that have left the Lord and left the church call me and say, Pastor, I need to come home. And guess what I say? Come on home. The family's waiting to come on home. Would you give the Lord a shout of praise? Hallelujah. We need to get our, we need to get our commitment. <laughs> well, we're not all the time reinventing the wheel, reinventing the wheel how we handle our finances. Will I do this? Or will I do it? Reinventing the wheel if I'm going to really serve the Lord. I'm telling you, my mind's made up. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I don't get up every day and think, am I going to serve the Lord today? No, I walk with commitment, and so do you. And it's time that we amp up the energy and find a new level of commitment. And we need to get compassion for the lost and the dying, the hurting and the broken. I preached Wednesday night about enthusiasm. And that was, that's been a kind of a tag that people placed on me all my life. And some people don't like me. I don't know why. They just don't know me. I say, people, if you don't know, if you don't like me, you just don't know me. Well, praise God. But people say, oh, that guy, he's on fire. He's enthusiastic. He's enthusiastic. I mean, like it's a problem. Like, that's a bad thing. Come on. The reality is, this church, beginning today, we are going to set a new determination and a new course to be people on fire. There's golf enthusiasts. enthusiasts. There's woodworking enthusiasts. There's uh, gardening enthusiasts. There's birds enthusiasts. There's hunting enthusiasts. There's fishing enthusiasts. I've got a question for you. Where are the Jesus enthusiasts? When do you think about love, adore, obsess with Jesus as much as enthusiasts, enthusiasts obsess about their stuff? Nothing wrong with having enthusiasm for other things. 
But when they take the place of your enthusiasm from Jesus, they become an idol. And God cannot hear you, God cannot honor you, and God cannot move in your life. It is time to have some fire starters in this room. How many give you right now? I want everyone to stand. And right now, you are not ashamed to say, I am on fire right now currently for Jesus. Lift up your hand. I want the first group of you that can get down here as fast as you can, like you've been set on fire. Come down here quickly. Now move. Today, I'm going to be Sheriff Andrew Griffin, and you're going to be Barney Fife. You're going to have one bullet, but that's enough. I'm going to deputize you. I want you to look up here. I say this very seriously. What this church needs is some fire deputies, some people who will be fire starters. In other words, everyone around can be cold and icy. The first church of the Frigidaires. But not you. But not you. You are going to be on fire and you're going to burn and you're going to get some sparks all over. 120, Mark, in the upper room and there was 120 cloven tons of fire. A personal fire. One for each of them. You don't need to share on anybody's fire. You can have one all for yourself. But here's the thing about fire. I hope nobody that could have a problem with this is watching. But out there where we live in a country, I always got a brush pile going. And I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I've started a fire and got on my mower. <laughs> and I come within a hair of burning down my neighbor's corn crop. I jump off. I get the holes. I get, I, I fix it. It's never happened and we never will. But let me tell you something. We're going to be people that when the wind blows, a spark gets on somebody else. So I want you all to turn. I want you all to turn and face the rest of the church. And I'd like for all of you in your seats, I want you to put your hands out like this. And you that are fire starters, I deem and deputize you as fire starters. Listen to me. Now on, from now on, we're nearing the last half of 2021. Our church cannot remain the same. We've been through so much. People have been sick. People have been hurting. People have been under attack. And we need a fresh fire. So right now, would you stretch your hand out toward the church? And you begin to pray out for them. And just begin to touch God. I pray for a fresh anointing, a fresh fire, a fresh wind, a fresh fervent passion, a fresh fire, an anointing of conviction. Come on, church. I want you that have come to this altar, lift up your voice and pray like you have never prayed before. God wants you to pronounce there is going to be a burning flame in this church. We're going to be a church on fire. We're not going to be casual. We're not going to be okay. We're not going to be ordinary or normal. We're going to be a fired up church. Come on, lift up your voice. Lift up your cry. Just begin to pronounce fire, 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 fire in our marriages, fire in our families, fire in our homes, fire in our finances, fire in this place, fire in our health. Start a new fire, God. Begin it with me. Start a flame of revival. And let me be the spark, oh God. May they look at my life and watch me burn. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name. Wow, 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 wow. Hallelujah.
I want you all to look up here at me. I'm as sincere as I've ever been in my life. We need you. We need you to be the influencers. We need you to set the tone. We need you to set the temperature. Come on. We need you to be the thermostats. If our church is going to go on and do great things for God, coming out of what we've all come out of, and we're really going to have the comeback, we know that God has destined for us, it's going to require people like you to say, I don't care what anyone thinks. If the Lord says dance, I'm dancing. The Lord says shout, I'm shouting. The Lord says run, I'm running. The Lord says witness, I'm witness. Whatever he wants me to do, I'll do it immediate. I'll do it without hesitation because I'm burning. I got the fire of God shut up in my bones. Hallelujah. And you walk this altar today saying you're on fire, then we need you to start a spark. We need you to be fire starters. All of these folks that are here and our entire church, they need the encouragement. They need to see they've walked through things like I've walked through them yet on fire. So come on, everybody here in Lighthouse, those watching at home, let's give the Lord a fiery shout of praise. Hallelujah.